Well, compared to the rates in the 80s and early 90s, crime overall is down in this country, but rampage shooters are increasingly common and they're killing more people, obviously. Almost all of them are young men. The question, which for some reason very few people ask, but is the key question is, what's driving this surge in extreme antisocial violence? One man who's been thinking about it a lot is Jordan Peterson. He's a psychology professor at the University of Toronto, and he just spoke with us moments ago. Here it is. Jordan Peterson, thanks for joining us tonight. My pleasure. We wanted to ask you the question that we think too few are asking, which is, why is this happening? Why are young men shooting up schools? Because they're nihilistic and desperate. How'd they get that way? Well, I think life can make you that way unless you have a, a purpose and a, and, a, and, a, and a destiny, let's say. I mean, there's no shortage of suffering and malevolence in life, and it's easy for people to become embittered by that. And if they don't see a way out, see a way forward, they get angry about it and, and turn against life itself. And they make a display of their hatred for being by massacring the innocent. That's what's happening. And it's they a, write that. They do write that. It's accelerating. Yes. The, 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 the reserve of guns has, I mean, we've had semi-automatic rifles for 100 years, but we haven't had this number of school shootings. So the attitudes are changing, I think it's fair to say. Why well, it's are also more... a kind of Sorry? it's also kind of a, a psychological epidemic. You know, these people keep track of each other, and there's a competitive element to it. And the fact that the media insists upon publicizing the names of these shooters is not helpful, because part of what drives them is motivation for notoriety. Because what notoriety is better than being ignored. So, what mistakes do you think we're making as a society to produce? an ever-increasing number of young men like this? Mm, that's a good question. I, I think we underestimate the necessity for young people to have clear direction and a sense of purpose in their life. They need something to offset the, the tragedy and, and malevolence of life. And we need to take these sorts of philosophical and even religious issues seriously. But we don't. Do you think we're taking them less seriously than we used to? Yes, definitely. I think that, that we talked in the past, we spoke much more about responsibility and, and, and uh, responsibility in particular, but also purpose and maturity. And we valued those things highly. We didn't confuse them with tyranny and toxic masculinity, for example. So Speaking of toxic I think we're doing a, yeah. why is it all boys? Well, boys are more aggressive than girls. And there's a biological component to that that's quite strong. That's why the vast majority of people in prison are male. Like on average, there's not much difference in aggression between men and women. If you picked a random woman and a random man out of the population and you had to bet on who was the most aggressive, if you bet it was the woman, you'd be right 40% of the time. But if you take the one in 100 most aggressive people, and those would be the people in prison, they're all men or virtually all men. It's also why males commit, males attempt suicide less frequently, but they commit it successfully much more frequently. They're much more likely to use lethal means. And so, and there's a very powerful biological component to that, despite what the postmodern social constructionists have to say about it. But they've got their head firmly buried in the sand, so. Yeah, no, they're resistant to the evidence in reality. We know that. So, but given that we know that boys are the ones, if there is a school shooting, who are going to be the ones committing it overwhelmingly, shouldn't we be thinking about how to raise our boys in a way that they're less likely to do this? Uh, yeah, I think we should be thinking about that. I mean, uh, the book I published here, this 12 Rules for Life, is a meditation on exactly that. I've been lecturing online about the, the idea that responsibility is what gives life meaning and that that meaning is the antidote to the sort of nihilism and, and, and aggression and resentment that can otherwise be produced. I mean, there's no doubt that life is difficult and that people get hurt and betrayed. That's, that's, that's uh, unassailable truth. You need something to offset that. And most people find that in, in their destiny and their adoption of responsibility and their willingness to make their own lives better and the lives of their families better and to contribute to the community and to bear, bear the burden of being nobly. And that works, and, but we, we, don't, we don't think that way anymore. You mentioned the toxic, toxic masculinity. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I've heard the phrase a lot. 
What what does it mean in our in our public conversation when someone attributes the shooting to toxic masculinity? Well, it's an attempt to smear the idea of masculinity by confusing masculine competence with tyranny. And it's part of the underlying idea that our culture is a corrupt, tyrannical patriarchy that was run by men for the advantage of men, which is a very pathological way of looking at the world, but a very common one. And if, if that description is accepted, then it means that masculine energy, so to speak, whether it's manifested by women or by men, that masculine energy does nothing but prop up the, the tyranny of the patriarchy. And, so should not be fostered. And the only people who think that way are women whose relationships with men have been extraordinarily damaged or men who are, have no idea who they are or who are trying to shirk responsibility. The idea that masculinity in its essence is somehow toxic is an absolutely dreadful idea. I'm glad I asked you that question.